Sean Barry, an athlete uh, placed third in the hammer throw, securing a spot on the US team for the Tokyo Olympics, which are set to begin next month. Now, when the Star Spangled Banner began to play um, during the medal ceremony, she decided to kind of turn away uh, in protest because of the Honestly, the climate in this country when it comes to African Americans, people of color. She said this, me being able to represent my community and my people and those who have died at the hands of police brutality, those who have died to this systemic racism, I feel like that's the important part here, right? So she not only turned away from the flag, she also draped a t-shirt bearing the words activist athlete over her head. And of course, that led to a full blown meltdown among right wingers who would rather focus on these issues to deflect from the fact that they're not offering Americans anything substantive to improve their lives materially. So one of those individuals is of course, Representative Dan Crenshaw, who's so, so offended. Let's watch. We don't need any more activist athletes. I, I, you know, she should be removed from the team. The entire point of the Olympic team is to represent the United States of America. That's the entire point. Okay, so you know, it's, it's it's one thing when these NBA players do it. Okay, fine, we'll just stop watching. But now the Olympic team, and it's it's multiple cases of this. They they, they should be removed. That that should be the bare minimum requirement is that you is that you believe in the country representing. But look, taking it a couple levels deeper. This is this is the pathology that occurs when we when we're teaching critical race theory um, yep. into our institutions because critical race theory again basically teaches that our institutions are racist that our systems are deeply racist. Now you can't see the racism right because it's subtle, but the only, and, and if you deny it, it's because of your white fragility. But you're teaching people this constantly, and this is what it results in. It results in this in in, in these displays of hatred towards our own country. Yeah. And it's got to stop. I would argue that the racism is not so subtle. I mean, it's not subtle when you watch a 12 year old black child get gunned down by a cop within literally two seconds because he's playing with a toy gun in a park. But anyway, that's beside the point. Let's focus on the fact that Dan Crenshaw, a Republican who whines and cries about cancel culture all day long, is now calling for the cancellation of an athlete who exercised speech that he doesn't like. You know, we can add a one other layer to it too. They're like, oh, the transgender athletes, it's not fair, etc. And you, you know, they, these athletes should compete on their own merits. So she competes on her own merits, mm -hmm. comes in third, ready to go. That means she qualifies for the Olympics. He's like, I don't like something she did. It's a freedom of speech. No, cancel her. Remove her. Remove her. I don't want her because she dared to do something I don't agree with. Okay. Now let's compare one other thing. So Republicans are defending the Capitol rioters. Mm -hmm. So they think that those guys are very pro-America, even though they invaded America's capital. Okay, you can say broke into the Capitol and uh, chanting "Hang Mike Pence," looking to execute the American Vice President, and uh, and everybody else, and Nancy Pelosi and AOC and the other people that they chanted about and were looking for, etc. And so the guys who invaded America's capital or broke into it, pro-American, uh, an American athlete that did a, a protest, a political protest, which by the way, is the single most American thing you can do, is not American and needs to be kicked out of the American team, okay? So the, the hypocrisy of that is so stunning. But what's more stunning is that almost no right winger in the audience understands it. They don't get it at all. They're like, oh yeah, she black, didn't stand up when I, we told her to. We told her to stand up and salute it, she didn't do it. God damn it. Oh, God, you guys are breaking into the thing and killing, want to kill American legislators. Yeah, pro America. And, and attempt to overturn the results of a democratic a, election. Yeah, I mean, exactly. come on. No, right. I mean, but, but this is why, look, this is why I think it's important to call the GOP out on just how hollow their arguments are as they engage in culture wars, right? And and the fact that their arguments are hollow provides evidence that the fact that they're focused on culture wars is just meant to deflect from the fact that they're not actually legislating to improve people's lives. That's really what this is about. Because what happened with General Mark Milley, right? The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff last week. So he dared, he dared to call Matt Gates out on his lies regarding critical race theory and wokeism within the military. And 
the GOP, which allegedly respects the military and our troops more than anyone, just started going after Mark Milley viciously, viciously. Because for them, the culture wars isn't even, like the culture wars might be annoying even if uh, Democrats and Republicans engaging in it are being sincere in what they're saying. But it's even worse because the GOP isn't even sincere in what they're saying. They're lying about what they claim to care about. They defended Donald Trump after it was reported that he referred to our fallen soldiers as suckers and losers. Yeah. Come on. Absolutely. Let alone their blue lives matter, unless it's capital cops, in which case, you know, tase them, kill them, etc. And, and don't investigate. All right. So now, but I want to make mention one other thing that's really important. So this whole thing about shaming African Americans or other minorities that don't stand up to the national anthem for the national anthem is it's infuriating. So this country enslaved millions of black people and then treated them horribly for centuries. And to this day has systemic racism where unarmed black men get shot on a consistent basis and we can go on and on and on with redlining and all the other abuses that happen. And after all of this abuse says, no, it's your job to love me. And if you don't love me, it's your fault, right? It's, a, it's an abusive relationship. And no, no, if you're black or you're another minority and you don't love the national anthem enough to please Republicans, who cares? Ironically, it's a free country. You're allowed to think anything you want. And you're allowed to think America has not been great to black people. Of course, of course, that's true. What kind of maniac thinks that America was great to black people? That's insane to think that. That doesn't mean we can't make it better. And finally, on the national anthem, this is really important, guys. I, you know, I, I see this every once in a while, and then I have to confess I, for, I forget. And then I reread it today. You know that there's a section in there that is deeply racist. Francis Scott Key wrote it. It was about the War of 1812 when the British had invaded. And there's this good heroic part of the story is we beat back the British in Baltimore and Fort McHenry. But you, you never hear this part, okay? There's a verse in there that says, their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. Why? Because several thousand freed slaves had joined the British to fight against America. Because America had enslaved them and tortured them and killed their family, right? And Francis Scott Key had lost the battle to freed black slaves and he hated them. So he put into the US national anthem, well, what became the American national anthem, a part about how we're gonna take those slaves and we're gonna give them the terror of flight and the gloom of the grave. And black people are supposed to stand up for that? And we're supposed to yell at them if they don't celebrate that verse in the national anthem? Are you insane? We take insane talking points of the Republicans and treat it as if it was rational. No, this is totally nuts. Gwen Berry is a hero just like the heroes of the past that stood up to oppression and stood up for justice. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.